Hey guys, my name is Derek and welcome back to my channel and once again I'm in my daughter's bedroom because it has the best light so I hope you like the background. In today's video I'm going to talk briefly about online shopping and I'm going to move towards a subject that I actually want to make this video about. I have done more online shopping since the start of this pandemic than I have ever done before and I'm actually really comfortable doing online shopping. I'm happy to buy groceries, I'm happy to buy clothes, I'm happy to buy electrical stuff. I'm happy to buy pretty much everything and I'm actually planning, hopefully, fingers crossed, that I'm actually planning on buying my next car online. But when it comes to eBay and Amazon and sites like that and Alibaba, I have no issues buying, for example, shoes, clothes, books, games, all that kind of stuff because worst case scenario, they don't work, they don't fit, they're poor quality and you either just get a refund or you chuck it out. It, financial loss is not my greatest concern when I buy online. My greatest concern when I buy online is the fact that some of the stuff is not exactly as they're advertised and when it becomes a safety issue or a health issue then this is where I draw the line and I don't. Stuff like I will not buy food, I will not buy hygiene products from a place like eBay or Amazon purely because you don't really know the companies that you're buying it from and the last thing you want to do is to for example if you two were to buy hand sanitizer or face masks or stuff like that from one of these sellers on eBay or Amazon you just don't know that it's got the real thing in it. I know that's been a little bit paranoid but I don't really want to stick a face mask which is purported to be an N95 and put it on my face and it turns out not to be and then I'm putting myself at risk because I thought it was an N95 and it turned out to be some cheap knockoff. Similarly with hand sanitizer you want to make sure that there's appropriate alcohol content in the hand sanitizer and to make sure it's actually hand sanitizer and it's just not some other stuff which can cause bad reactions to your skin and it basically just doesn't work the way it's advertised and that worries me a lot and they're the only products that at this point I will not buy from an online reseller like eBay or Amazon. Now having set the bar where I've set it I just want to talk about a product which I didn't think I'd buy but I have bought it and it's actually been a real eye-opener over the last few weeks and that's a CO2 monitor. What is a CO2 monitor? Well CO2 monitors monitor carbon dioxide. All the talk right at the moment is that we need to protect ourselves from the virus and one of the best ways is when you're indoors we have to ventilate, ventilate, ventilate. I'm wearing masks every time I'm out of the house but you can't always rely on other people to be wearing masks and especially with kids going back to school and stuff you just want to make sure that the room that you're in is adequately ventilated because if the room is poorly ventilated whoever's been in there over the last 30 60 minutes their breathing the stuff that they breathed out can very well still be lingering inside the room and because we're dealing with a droplet an airborne virus we want to make sure that we minimize our risks not only by wearing masks and social distancing but we want to try and get into a room which is well ventilated and it's not at risk of having people who have potentially had the virus who've been in there recently and having their respiratory junk still lurking around in the room. Now CO2 monitors do not detect the presence of virus so it's really important you remember that but what it does tell us is if the CO2 level is abnormally high what that means is that it is a very badly ventilated space and the more people that have been in there or the more people that are in there with you at the time the more likely the CO2 levels are to rise unless it's well ventilated and basically you don't want to be breathing in everybody else's exhaled air. So to the subject of this video I've got two things to show you the one on this side, this is your left, my left, I can't tell when it's reversed on a camera like this, but basically this is the Aronet 4, this is the benchmark in CO2 monitoring. It retails in Australia for $399 and it has an associated iOS and Google app. So what you can do is once you get the data, you can download it or it syncs with your phone and it gives you a graphical representation of what the CO2 levels have been over a period of time. This one is the benchmark. This one uses AA batteries which last somewhere between six months and seven years depending on the settings. This is the one everyone recommends. This one is in a fancy little box. It's called a CO2 detector. I don't know the brand itself. This one is from eBay and it retails for $30. The difference between this one and the Aeronet 4 is, in fact, I'll show you in a minute, it has a bigger digital display it is rechargeable by USB-C and it basically has all the bells and whistles 
of the Aeronet 4 apart from the fact that there is no associated phone app. So basically what you see is what you get. And here are the two right here. So these have been sitting in the room for about the last 10 minutes while I've been talking to you. That's the eBay version and this is the Aeronet 4. Now the Aeronet 4 is nice and square shaped. It's pretty nice and it's very very light. Here it's still got the little screen protector thing. This is the eBay version. There's your USB-C port right there. There's your display and both of these not only measures your CO2 level but also measures the temperature of the room and the humidity. Now theoretically in a well ventilated outdoor space CO2 levels is roughly around 420, 450 and as it rises when you're indoors it becomes a little bit more of a concern when the level reaches 800 to 1000 and red flags go up when the CO2 level in the room is greater than 1000. The first thing you'll notice when I held up these two CO2 monitors is they've been in exactly the same spot for exactly the same amount of time. The Aronet source is 523 and it's 23 degrees in here at 67% humidity. The eBay one says 422 and it says 23 degrees and it's 47% humidity. So the temperature readings are relatively similar. The humidity is different by about 20% and you can see the significant difference in the CO2 levels as detected by the two different monitors. This one is real time so as you can see the, the numbers change continuously. This one updates based on the settings you made on the phone. So it's either one, two, five or ten minutes. I've got this set on two minutes. So these have both been here for more than ten minutes so they should both have equalized and there's approximately a hundred difference between the Aronet sensor reading and the cheaper eBay version. Now I have taken both of these in different scenarios for example inside a badly ventilated vehicle when my whole family's been in there the aircon's been on recirculate I've taken it inside a GP practice basically my conclusion is this one is a dud it looks nice but it doesn't work I've never seen this thing go above 450 no matter what even when this one says a thousand this one still says 420 so basically what that means is they use different sensors one of them works and one of them definitely doesn't. And if you are to trust this product as the benchmark, you can see that the eBay version, which is this one, is way off. And this is what I was talking about in terms of buying stuff from places like eBay and Amazon, is that you've got to be able to trust the product and the seller. Clothes, books, DVDs, t-shirts, socks, it doesn't matter if it doesn't quite fit. But if you're relying on this unit, to tell you whether a room is well ventilated and whether it's relatively safe or it's not, this is going to give you a lot of false reassurance. If you're in a really badly ventilated room, this thing's going to still tell you it's 430, which clearly it isn't if you had the Aronet 4 with you. And so this product is cannot be trusted. I've actually messaged a seller and told them that this product doesn't work. And this is one of the things like you know, everyone's jumping on the bandwagon right now. They're trying to make products that are selling fast. So you're not going to sell a lot of snow cones in the middle of winter, but you're certainly going to sell them in summer. And this is exactly the approach of many, not all, of the sellers on places like eBay and Amazon. They're just trying to ride the waves, the trend, and they're just trying to jump on the wagon where something becomes popular so everyone so all of a sudden decides to sell that product. So it's irrelevant that this product is one-tenth of the price or one-ninth of the price of the Aeronet 4. It's irrelevant the fact that this is better in terms of having USB-C charging. It's irrelevant because of the fact that this LED thing looks a little bit more attractive than the Aeronet 4. The bottom line is this one doesn't work and this one should not be sold. I've actually mentioned this to the seller and I don't know how far I'm going to get with that because it's all of the excuse thing. Maybe you got a defective product and kind of stuff like that. But I have a feeling, QC Pass by the way, just to get on board this whole CO2 monitoring thing. But this is one of the things that are dangerous. Just like if you sold counterfeit masks, just the same as if you sold dodgy hand sanitizer, people are relying on this to protect their own health and this is a very irresponsible product. I've certainly read about scams on the internet where you buy you know a 64 gigabyte SD card and they ship it in 64 but when you stick in the computer it's actually like a 2 gigabyte SD card and that's just fraud. 
this is actually bordering on that because this product, I don't know if the people who sell these products have actually tested these products, but obviously they don't work. And I will actually attempt to upload a couple of photos with this video just to show you different situations where there's been a huge discrepancy between the two readings, just to demonstrate the fact that one product is way superior than the other. And not only that, the other one actually doesn't work. I don't even know how this claims to be a CO2 monitor because literally it never goes above 450 ever. Whether there's just some circuit in there just keeps randomly picking numbers between 400 and 500 and just displays that, which would be very disappointing because a lot of people are buying this stuff because in some ways, you know, you look at a product like the Aronet 4 was $400. You do want to protect yourself, but a lot of people don't have $400. So they are actually going to these sites like eBay and they're finding stuff that's cheaper and they're going to take the risk hoping that whilst it's not going to be as good as the Aronet 4, that at least it works. There may be a 10% margin of error, but they're just relying, and if you don't have a secondary CO2 monitor to compare, you're going to think that every room in the world is well ventilated. And don't be deceived, by the way. Just because you can feel a breeze in the room from the air conditioning or the fan doesn't mean that the room is well ventilated. I've already said that in the car, with my entire family, with the air conditioning on, recycle, the Aronet 4 goes up to 3,000. And in a GP practice, when I'm sitting there, probably with about five people in the waiting room with the air condition blasting, that also hit 3,000. So whilst obviously there is air flow, there isn't good ventilation because it's just recirculating the air that's in the room. In that situation, I stayed there for as short of time as I possibly could and I just got the hell out of there. We were there for one of our daughters getting a vaccine and we had to wait 15 minutes to make sure she didn't have reactions. So we actually waited outside and in the car, because it's your own family, it's not so critical, but it's really important that when you're in a car with people you don't know, you definitely do not have the AC on recycle. And if possible, you have the windows open. And actually, it's best thing is just not to have other people that you don't know in your car right now. So just to conclude, aesthetically, I don't know which one you think looks better, but now we know which one actually works. So looks aren't everything. CO2 monitors, once again, must repeat, do not detect the presence of virus. All it does is tells you or gives you an idea how well or how badly a room is ventilated. And if there happens to be virus in the room, a better ventilated room has better chance of clearing that virus and not having it linger there for as long. And it's actually much safer. And that's what everyone's trying to do in terms of making sure schools are safe. I don't know how that's going to go because we're not actually allowed to go into the school to have a look at the classrooms. One day I may try and sneak the Aronet 4 into one of my kids' pockets just to see. Because the good thing about the Aronet 4 is because it connects to your phone, they can bring it home and you can actually just upload the data when you get home. Not so with the cheap eBay one. Even if it worked, it's real time and that's all you get. You don't record any of the readings so you won't be able to know. But that's something I'm considering. Anyhow, this is one clear example that buying the good thing is the only way to go. And if you can't afford the Aronet 4, there may be cheaper ones that work well, but you need to do your research. And I certainly would avoid places like eBay and Amazon when you come to buying stuff like CO2 monitors. And even though I purchased this Aronet 4 at recommended retail price, I'm going to leave a link below in the comments to let you know if you live in Australia and New South Wales in particular, where you can get it from an authorized distributor. And in the meantime, I'm hoping to get a refund for the dodgy eBay one. They don't even want it back. So this is how sad it is. They send me this email saying that it's gonna to be too much hassle to send it back. Why don't we just get your partial refund and you can keep the thing. We're still negotiating on that. Keeping this thing doesn't mean anything because it doesn't work. It only works as an example of how bad it is because this is ridiculous. You know, 564 and 422, this thing has never during this course of this video changed above, as I said, 450. So in the meantime, you guys stay safe. Leave a comment below if you've been using a CO2 monitor and what sort of readings you get and whether you find it as an important part of your arsenal in protecting yourself and your family. But until next time, have a great day and I'll catch you next time in another video. Bye.